So Roblox has added a new app deformer instance and it showcases it's kind of let's just say questionable but the instance is basically used to deform meshes and it works with the editable mesh API. So I'm just going to overview it and as usual leave a like and subscribe to support the channel and let's just get into the video. And here we are in Roblox Studio. So first I'm just going to basically show with an example from the deform post on how to use the rough deformer instance but to actually use the mesh api there is one thing that we have to do under the home tab and the game settings and is to go to the security and enable the allow mesh and image apis you basically just want to check this option for the rough deformer to work but now i'm just going to get a mesh part under the workspace and for this one i'm going to assign the mesh id property and i should already have a mesh under my mesh parts in my inventory and it's actually well right here so i'm just going to press on the copy mesh id and well paste it in and here it turned into a mesh so i'm just going to scale it down and for example just anchor it and on a quick note you have to have access to a mesh part to basically just deform it where you'd have to be the creator or maybe be in a group that actually uploaded the mesh. I'm pretty sure you can just go to the toolbox, then search for like a sphere and try to deform it because it might not actually work. But anyways, since we have this mesh part now, I'm just going to add another instance to it called a wrap target. And this already gave me an error saying that cage mesh ID for wrap target is empty. And this actually has the cage mesh ID property where you could put for example an ID of a lower resolution sphere. So this wouldn't be too resource heavy, but well I'm just going to copy the mesh ID and then again paste it under the wrap target cage mesh ID property. And we basically just have the setup ready. So now we need to use the editable mesh API. And I'm just going to add a script into this mesh part and change the run context to be client. And that's because the mesh API only works on the client. But now I'm going to go to the deform post really quickly since I want to grab a code snippet from this same example. And I will be overviewing the whole deform post in a later part, but for now I'm just going to copy this code. And well, just paste it in. And to go through all of this really quickly, we basically just get the mesh part and the wrap target, then get the run service and the asset service, then make a new wrap deformer instance and create editable meshes. And now thankfully everything is basically just explained in these comments, since without it I would basically not know what would be the reason of creating the copy, but anyway. Then we set the cage mesh content, and this is the function which is going to update the deform for basically these vertices. And all of this happens in a while loop, so I'm just going to well present it right now. And here is the sphere well deforming like this. You can see that it's going to like this X shape and it's coming back down. And there isn't really much to it, this example only has this little deform. But what if I wanted to for example make it where it's also going to deform downwards and that would be just as easy as going back to the script and changing the zero value right here since this is clamped to be maybe minus 100 and now this is just going to deform in two directions so yeah it's pretty neat a different thing that we can do since this is only deforming on the y axis i could basically just for example copy all of this and deform it on the x axis as well but i will need to of course change some variables so this is for the x and this right here is for the y so if i do another playtest now we are just going to have this well pulsating mesh and not going to like this has a pretty nice effect but yeah, I'm basically just going to go to the examples now that were provided in the demonstration file by Roblox. And you again get them from the dev forum under the example place file paragraph. So you just need to download this rough deform demo. And there is also a few things that we need to do, mostly with the animations, which are going to give us a warning. And this is just for the palm animation, where it's saying that the rigged palm tree animation has not been published from your account. Because we basically just can't play animations that are well not our own. So what we need to do in this case would be to just go to the avatar tab and open the animation editor. And then we'll just press on this tree right here. And this is going to open an animation for us. And we just need to publish this one to Roblox, meaning that first we actually have to publish this place. So I'm just going to save this. Then press on these three dots in the animation editor on the left and press on publish to Roblox. And I'm just going to name this one palm, then press on save and copy the ID board the button. Kind of seems to be broken since the icon is in the ID itself. So just make sure that it says ID copied. And after that I can close this and close the animation editor as well. And again I have to go back to this model, then just expand it, go to the animation controller and this script right here. Now the line 11 is basically just where we have to replace the ID. And we have to do this for this palm right here, as well as this one. So again, just expand it, go to the controller, then the script, and replace the ID. And before we get to actually doing the playtest, 
We just have to enable the Mesh API from the settings. And now everything should be working, except some of the animations since this is giving me a warning but it actually shouldn't since the animations are playing properly on the palms. But well, anyway, now my character is well, I don't think I need to comment on it, but anyway, I'm going to overview the palms first, where right here you have the original mesh that's playing the waving animation, then the cage mesh, which is a different mesh from the original palm, and this is what I mean about having a different mesh resolution to put in the wrap target. But yeah, you can see how this is deforming, and right here is the combination of these two, where this is both deforming and playing the animation at the same time. So yeah, now for the wrap deformer, here we have an original mesh part, which is again just a sphere, then the wrap target, wrap deformer and then a statically deformed sphere, and then a combination of the wrap deformer and the editable mesh, which well I shown a minute ago. And probably the most interesting thing which is the plan shape workflow, where we can basically just pick one of these meshes, and this is also what the UI in the bottom right is for. So I'm just going to pick the first one, and then without any further explanation, I'm just going to show what's going to happen to my character's head after I change the muzzle. And this is basically just having like a sphere that's going from my chin to a higher part of my face. So yeah, I would rather not question why my character became a reptilian, but this is a pretty weird thing to basically just showcase this feature on. And if I were to showcase this on different meshes now, this one is going to have white cheeks. And again, if I change it, it's just going to look like, well, this. And I bet you guys are feeling uncomfortable when watching this, and don't worry, I'm feeling uncomfortable while recording this video too. Okay, and this one seems kind of normal, so what is going to happen if I go to this one? And I've already read the anime text, so <laughs> I don't think I actually want to turn around. But yeah, maybe I shouldn't have done that. I don't think this is an anime avatar. Anyways, for the last example, which is this abomination, apparently this is a round head, so... Yeah, <laughs> I feel like there would be way better examples than all of these cage meshes to just showcase this on. But overall, with this update, Roblox was kind of cooking. Can I just reset my character maybe? So I don't have to do the facial animations over and over again? Okay, this is much better. But yeah, jokes aside, this is going to be pretty amazing for maybe like a character customization system. Same with maybe like car customizations and overall just different projects that would require a lot of mesh deformation. And well, if you have any other ideas, why well, this would be good, you can comment them down below. But well, I'm going to move on to the dev forum now. And here is the dev forum post about the introducing the new wrap deformer instance. And you have all of this different stuff like using the wrap deformer, a bunch of examples, the best practices and known issues. But basically, they have introduced the new wrap deformer instance and associated APIs. So you can basically just modify 3D meshes with skinning, joints and FACS data more easily in your published experiences. And you basically just use inspiration from the layered clothing with the previously shown wrap deformer instance which uses cage meshes. And here you have this little preview which I'm basically just trying not to laugh at and it basically just presents how the new wrap deformer works and yeah. I'm just going to skip to the using the wrap deformer <laughs> instance where apart from all of the other things that you already know you have these two different nodes. First one is the cage mesh ID property which will be deprecated in favor of the cage mesh content which is apparently based on the new content type. And also the UV values of the wrap deformer should match those of the wrap target, saying that the two cages can have different numbers of vertices and even different topologies, but the UV coordinates have to basically just match. And here are the different examples that, again, I already went over. This is the example and the code with the sphere deform, another example of the dynamic deformation of a rigged, skinned and animated mesh, and the blend shape workflow, so yeah. To basically just skip through all of this, here you have the cages.zip file, which are cage meshes that represent a lower resolution version of the avatar where each vertex has a unique UV value. And even here you have even more code that you can for example just copy and use, and again the example file. We've mentioned usage instructions, as well as some notes for navigating in this example file, saying that there are three folders that contain all the instances of each of the above examples, with the sphere deform, skinned animated mesh, and the blend shape workflow. Then some information on the wrap deformer, with this information to see an example that shows how to use the animated editable mesh to wrap a wrap deformer cage mesh that deforms a sphere, take a look at the workspace then the wrap deformer and the dynamically deformed sphere and the wrap deformer script. And it's basically the same for the skin animated mesh and the blend shape workflow. 
and instructions to publish the free animations under your own account. And this one is pretty important since otherwise, if you don't own the animation, you are basically just not going to see it play. But again, you already know that. And now for the best practices paragraph. While you need to know that even while using the wrap deformer, there is still a limit to how much it can deform while maintaining the quality of the facial expression. And to maintain the quality itself, the deformer should be smooth and semantic, meaning all of the vertices should not change. So from my understanding, I just try not to maybe deform all of the vertices at once. And of course, here are the known issues. Meaning that the heavy deformation, if you for example just keep the best practices, can lead to the skinning artifacts around the eyes and mouth during the animation. And here, they are just saying that this will be fixed in an upcoming release. And of course, let's see here is the what's next. Where they haven't really specified anything, they just said that they are happy for creators to have a new tool, and they say that feedback is always welcome. And of course, thanks to basically these people right here. And also other people seem to just point out that Roblox showing an example like this is also pretty funny. So yeah, that's basically going to be everything for this deform post, and that's also going to mark the end of this video. So yeah, as usual, leave a like and subscribe to support the channel, also check out my Patreon page, and thanks for watching, hope you had a nice day, and see ya guys!